In this video, we're going to be looking at how to create a really nice glitch effect in Photopea. Hi there and welcome to the video. So as you can see, I've already loaded up the photo we're going to be working on today and there's a download link in the description box below so you can follow along. So the first thing we need to do is to create some duplicates of this background layer. So I'm going to do that by clicking on the layer and pressing Ctrl or Command J, depending if you're on a PC or a Mac, to make a duplicate. The first layer, or the first copy, I'm going to just call one. And the one thing we need to do with this one is we need to desaturate it. So go to Image, Adjustments, and then there's an option here that's just called Desaturate and it'll just do it on the flattened layer. So you don't need to go into Hue Saturation or anything. Okay, then we need to make another two copies of this. So I'll press Control or Command J again, once and then again. We'll call the second one two, and the third one, yep, you guessed it, we're gonna call three. Just keeps it in order and keeps it a bit organized. Now layer one, we're gonna leave alone. Layer two, we're gonna double click on the area next to the layer name to bring up the layer style dialog screen. Now the bit we're interested in is in the middle here where it says channels RGB, which are all checked. Now for this layer, which is layer two, I'm gonna to choose to deselect the R. So uncheck the R, so now I've just got GB, okay? And then we go up into the third layer and now we uncheck R and G, so we've just got B checked. So go into layer two and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna move, use the left and right arrow keys and the reason why we're holding the shift key is it just makes the uh, just makes the movements a little bit larger so we're not here all day tapping the key. But make sure on the move tool first and a shortcut for that is V. So now I'm just going to start nudging this layer to the left and you can see what's happening. Because we turned off some of those layer colors, um, layer channel color options, they're starting to split the color out now in a really interesting way. So now we've got a sort of green and magenta going on. I'm gonna to go to layer three and I'm gonna do the same thing. But I might go the other way this time. I might go right instead of left. And now you can see we're getting that sort of classic offset color base for a generic glitch effect. You can go the other way and see what you get. Now it's going red and cyan, which is quite cool. And you can keep going and you get the red, green and blue, but just offset the other side. So you can really have fun playing around with this stage. So once we've got something we like, like this, I'm going to click on the top layer, hold shift, click on the one or the bottom layer, and then press Control or Command G to make it into a group. And I'm just gonna call this um, just layers. So we've got that as a backup. Now what we need to do is to create a duplicate of this, but as one flattened pixel layer. And there are a few ways of doing this, but at this stage, it's probably easier to just make a duplicate of that layers group we've just created. And then we can just go merge layers. Okay, so now we've got our merge layer. I'm just gonna call it merge, just so we can keep track. So this is the layer that we're now gonna start creating the second stage of the glitch effect on. Now this is the fun part, I think, because you get to really use your own creativity and have fun. So make sure we've got the rectangular selection here. So M is the shortcut, but just make sure it's the rectangular version. And on that merge layer, we're gonna start from the top and just drag out some rectangular shape selections. Now here's a hint, if you're dragging out a rectangular selection like this, and it's not in the right place, whilst you're still got the um, rectangle click down and moving. If you hold the space bar, you can then move around the position of that rectangle, which is pretty handy. So we'll just do something like this. And now while it's selected, make sure you're on the merge layer and press our good old duplicate, Command or Control J. Again, Control if you're on a PC, Command if you're on a Mac. And it's just jumped that selection to a new layer, which we can then nudge over to the side. You can just drag it, but if you drag it with the mouse or a tablet, just make sure that you hold down the shift key to lock it, which will lock it into a straight line. So it doesn't wander off up or down, otherwise it looks a bit weird. So let's just start off with that one. Then go back to the merged layer and we'll go over to the other side and we'll do the same thing again. Now try and make sure that things aren't too even. It's, it's hard to make it look random intentionally, but 
try and just make it look a little bit random so offset it from the other one generally and you can you can drag this inwards you can drag it out a bit or you can actually even have it just floating in the air which looks quite good sometimes and then press um, enter return to sort of make that live now it's just a case of going back to this merge layer and repeating this process um, wherever you like you can also have these sort of sliced pieces just very very slightly off like that and then have another one really close by that looks pretty good so then you could do a bit straight under this that's maybe a little bit longer again put that on a new layer drag it out and that looks quite cool so you've got these these little random bits now one piece of advice i do have while going through this process is try not to make the glitch pieces as it were um too strong over recognizable features so what i mean by that and i'll show you an example of what not to do we've got his eyes here well it's a mask so they're crosses but it does represent his eyes obviously as like a feature of the face so if you if you do this and try and glitch this bit to the side it just looks strange now because it's it's almost made a main feature of a face a bit unrecognizable and we don't want to take that away so if you do want to do it over something like the eyes the nose or the mouth my tip would be to just do it a very slight bit a very small bit so it's just you can still tell what it's supposed to be but it, again it's just offset it slightly that would be my my tip i'm not going to make you watch me do all this so i'm going to just go to the final thing but if you work your way down the image doing this you'll come to a similar result okay there we are i've just spent about five minutes doing this across the whole image and as you can see from the layers stack we've now got a lot of layers that all represent these different glitch pieces now it's great to keep these separate because we can go back and move them later and reposition it later but we do want to organize them so go to the very top of the layers where all these glitch pieces are click on the layer to the side and then scroll down to the last piece of your glitch layers hold the shift key and click and that will select everything then control or command g to put those into a group and we'll just call those glitch pieces and the beauty of doing this it doing it this way sorry instead of just merging everything down is now if we wanted to go back and we wanted to have a play around and change some of these glitch layers then we've still got them all separate and we can go back and tweak to our heart's content. Now, this is looking good, but we are not done yet because there's another couple of stages which really put the finishing touch to this. And for the next step, we're going to create a new layer. So go down and click the new layer icon down here. And we're gonna fill it with gray. So the easiest way to do a fill is to click on the layer and hold shift and press F5. So shift and F5 brings up the fill dialog box, or you can just go to edit fill here if you want to go to the menu. So when we're in the fill dialog box, we're going to go to the fill option and we're going to choose gray. Now that just creates a neutral gray layer, which will then allow us to add the next fil filter onto, because if we didn't have, if we just had a blank layer, this filter wouldn't work. So we're now going to go to filter, filter gallery, There we go. Scroll down to the bottom and under the sketch section, we want to go to half tone pattern. Now we're not creating a half tone pattern for this image, but we're going to use this filter because we can get a good result another way. Change the pattern to line. Now what we're trying to do here is make almost like an old TV style um, scan line effect. So we'll drag the size value up. And what we're looking for here is getting the lines to the point where there's easily visible gaps between the lines, something like that. You don't want to go too big, but you definitely want to see clearly the gap between the lines. And then we can punch up the contrast just to make it a bit more definite. Maybe I'll go up a little bit with the size. You don't want to go too big. Like I said, something like that is perfect, I think. Click OK. And now we're going to change the blend mode from normal to soft light. And as you can see, that's added a really cool effect that's 
yeah, he adds even more to the glitch aesthetic. And if you look down at the top, it's actually helped to bring out some more detail. And I like to drop the opacity on this a little bit, depending on the image, maybe to something like 80 or 90%, so it's not too strong, but that's completely subjective. If you like this effect, then please check out the video in front of you now on the screen. It's another one of my tutorials and I'm sure you'll really like it, so please feel free to click away. Thank you very much for watching.